Hello, everybody. Welcome to International Day of Midwife Celebration with Lily Excellence Center. We are so happy to have you in this beautiful day. Thank you for joining us and play. Please stay with us till the end of the session. You will feel very, very happy with these beautiful speakers and their very uh, experimental uh, talk in this beautiful day. Thank you so much. I invite my uh, um, uh, co-moderator partner, Dr. Kate Lightly, to introduce herself and continue. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this celebration of the International Day of the Midwife. It is just such an honor and a privilege to be here with you all this evening and to see so many faces and names from around the world here to share a celebration of the midwife and everything that that means for women and their families. And just to see just such a diverse kind of group of people from all over the planet. So I am so excited to hear what everyone has to share and I'm sure that we're all going to learn a lot. So my name's Kate Lightly. I am an, I'm a, I'm an obstetrician but here to celebrate midwives definitely and I'm here to help um, Leila co-host the event this evening. So our first speaker is a senior midwife from the UK. Her name is Mary Lynch. I don't know how many years Mary has been a midwife but it's fair to say that mid midwifery is in her blood and she has many, many years of experience. Mary is a research midwife in Bristol in the UK, and she's also one of the senior labor ward leads there. She is um, part of the prompt multi-professional disciplinary team training, which um, provides training locally and internationally. She is the international lead midwife for the Philippines arm of the prompt work and her current research is all about antenatal care in Nepal and stillbirth research in the UK. So I'll hand over to you Mary and um, I look forward to hearing your talk. Thank you. I don't seem to be able to be able to share the screen Kate. Syed, are you able to make Mary the co-host, please, so that she can share her slides? And we'll need to do that for all of the presenters as well, just in case. Thank you. It's the joys of teaching on Zoom, isn't it? My husband gave me instructions before he left today. Right, okay. Um, can you see my slides? Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. So Kate and Lola, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so thrilled and honoured and I've now sorted out my time frame and my time schedule and my time app. So delighted to be with you across the globe. It's so exciting. I cannot tell you how exciting it is. So this is me at work and I firmly, passionately believe that midwives changing the world one family at a time on this special day. So just bear with me. So this is me. I am, I'm a midwife. And to be very honest, I was never going to stay a midwife, actually. I became a nurse. I'm, I'm from Ireland. I became a nurse in London and then I moved to Norwich just to have another, another qualification. And then I was always going to go back home to Ireland and I was never going to stay a midwife. But actually, the whole the whole um, the whole area of midwifery and the whole area of empowering women and making a difference for women every day grabbed me. And here I am. 25 years later, still a midwife. So I work in uh, this hospital, South Mead Hospital in Bristol in the UK. And as you can see, you can see where London is on the map. So Bristol is about 140 miles west of London. Um, and we are quite a big city. We are about 700,000 people um, and we're in the southwest region of the country. So we deliver about six and 6,300 deliveries a year in our hospital. There's two maternity hospitals in Bristol. 
Um, we are a tertiary level centre. We are, have a labour ward, a neonatal intensive care unit, which takes um, babies from across that region of the southwest, and really from 22 weeks, 23 weeks, very, very small babies. Um, we have really good outcomes from there. Um, we have a lot of collaboration with our neonatal um, doctors and our obstetrician consultants. Um, and it's, it's the whole thing about midwifery is about, is about being a team. We also have a standalone birth centre. Um, we have home births. We have midwife led units where we have water births and we have community midwifery, midwifery teams. Now I know it's probably not the same across the world, but we are the experts in maternity care for 28 days and a midwife and a community midwife will have access uh, to the woman uh, for 28 days postnatally. So I'm very conscious that this is a global, a global talk, but actually we, we share the same ideas, we share the same values. And one of the things we've had in the UK is that we've reviewed our maternity services about five years ago. And I think this encapsula encapsulates the, the vision that we have, the vision that we have in the UK, and actually the vision that we have globally, to be honest. So we want to have a safer, more personalised, kinder, professional and more family friendly service where women have access to information to make their own decisions and they have access to support that is centred around their individual needs and circumstances. And the latter half, that, that's, that's the same globally, really. We're here to be women focused and women empower, empower women. And the second half of the sentence really is kind of where I, where I work. I work in labour ward. That's where I uh, work in a high intensive labour ward, uh, multi-professional um, complexities in, 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 in women's medical conditions and in pregnancy conditions. So what I'm really focused on my whole career is on high performing teams, in organisations that are women-centred, that are well-led, and in cultures which promote innovation, continuous learning, and break down organisational and professional boundaries. The world needs midwives now more than ever, as we know, and particularly on this day, it's fantastic to celebrate such a, such a pivotal day, to be honest. So the thoughts that we have about the importance of mid midwives midwives and midwives globally has been shared in the Lancet earlier in the year in January and a substantial increase in coverage of midwife-led interventions could avert 41% of maternal deaths, 41%, 39% of neonatal deaths, 26% of stillbirth and that is equation to 2.2 million deaths averted by 2035. That is phenomenal and I think midwives can help to substantially reduce maternal and neonatal mortality and stillbirths in low and middle income countries. However, to realise this potential, midwives need to have skills and competencies and to be part of a team of sufficient skill and size and to work in an enabling environment and to work in an enabling environment to work together with, with our multi-professional colleagues is the heart of why I come to work. So as Kate said earlier, I've been very fortunate to be part of practical uh, obstetric multi-professional training, prompt organisation. Um, and this is, this came, we started this in Bristol in 20, uh, 20, 20, 20, uh, 21 years ago in 2000. 2000. Um, and we've, basically we have doc, uh, obstetricians, midwives, and anaesthetists and maternity care workers working together to, to um, develop a very simple skills and drills emergency training that we all are encompassing as a team and that we all work together and we know each other's names and we are respectful and we are all in this together to improve outcomes for women. And we, it's, we have um, training in the afternoon, every year we have training um, and we, we actually have shared this globally. We've done it nationally in um, all across England and in Scotland, in Wales. Um, and we've also, actually we've been into Northern Ireland as well thinking about it. So it's just, we have scenario skills of postpartum hemorrhage, eclampsia, sepsis, all those things that we work together with as a team that can only function um, when we're with high performing teams. So we've broken down barriers, and I was very fortunate to work with um, Kieran, which is the obstetrician on the left. Um, we went to the Philippines and we were over there for, oh, we went to and fro to the Philippines for two years. And our multi-professional uh, trainings reduced maternal mortality by 23%. So 
we've we've grown this this um, culture of team working in Bristol, and we've shared that throughout the world, and that's been really really empowering for me as a midwife, and. Um, empowering to be collaborating with so many people and I'm just immensely proud of doing that. Um, and as you can see, this is all of us in the middle in our maternity units. Now we don't have a very fancy maternity unit. We, you know, buildings can fall can can fall down and buildings can, you know, the rain can fall in at some point so we have to fix it. But the thing that we pride ourselves together is the people that are in that organization and that's what makes us efficient and effective. Um, if you see me on the right, we're doing some props. We, we, I had a postpartum hemorrhage there and at the Royal College of um, Obs and Gynecologists in London. Um, and doctors and midwives came from, all, came from all over the world for their, uh, their training there. And they also came from uh, around the country. So, so I think that really, really when you see us working together, you realize actually this, we're, saying, we're saying that we do it together. Uh, I think that's me helping on some shoulder dystocia. Um, drill. So again, uh, this is our anaesthetist and he's talking about his sepsis station. So we, we would spend 30 minutes on our training and talking about sepsis and getting everybody involved in how we can recognize signs and how we become effective in our communication. Um, the top screen is where we took our training to Belfast and um, we, we were there for two days and it was really nice to meet so many different people across so many different organizations and their own hospitals to see what they do. Um, and I think that's me at the bottom and I was speaking at the Royal College of Midwives annual conference on the stillbirth research that I was doing. So I think when I started um, to be a midwife, I never actually realized where I would go, where it would take me. And I think that's one of the interesting things about being today is how we celebrate the opportunities that we've had along the way. And I think one of the things that um, I'm so, impressed with is that I've become involved in research and I just think that gives you another um, emphasis on what we can do and how we can how we can change our practice and improve our practice and this took me to Nepal I never in my wildest dreams thought I would be in Nepal so um, we were looking at antenatal improvement in Nepal and how um, attending antenatal um, attending antenatal uh, care can improve for women and why were they accessing it why were they not accessing it um, and we're just currently writing that up at the moment um, one of the main things we find is that access to early first trimester screening and first trimester identifying risks in pregnancies and how can we improve on that to improve the, the whole course of a pregnancy again the women um, were really involved and they were happy to uh, to give some feedback and we were very grateful that um, people are engaged in research and it really just shows us and tells us more information on how things are going well, what we can improve on and it's, I just find it really powerful and it's really interesting wherever you go and it takes you to the world really. Um, one of the last things I want to talk about is that I have been recently um, elected as a midwife representative of M Maternal Medicine Society in in uh, in London. It's in the UK. It's a group of um, obstetricians and physicians that become um, that share their understanding and their knowledge about how to improve maternal outcomes for women that have attend mater um, maternal medicine clinics. And I think um, one of the things I've realised about the pandemic is that. Uh, the availability of training, the availability of free webinars has just been completely phenomenal. And I think possibly like midwives across, across the world, we don't generally have access to training, pots of training money um, to spend on expensive training or anything like that. So the fact that there's so many uh, webinars that's been going on in, in various disciplines across the UK. And I just, I just draw your highlight, highlight to you there that um, check them out and you can see that they... they um, they give webinars on like diabetes and preeclampsia and all those complexities that we really need to um, improve outcomes for women. The Royal Society of Medicine have done excellent ones as well and every, anything that's free I'm quite into, I'm quite into exploring where that is. So with the, um, the, the modern technology that we have and the webinars that we can do, it's so worth availing of it all. So anywhere you can find it, just, just have a look. It's really good. And then I think, oh, sorry, let me just... Um, the, the, the journey I wanted to say is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think the whole, the whole collaboration and the whole teamwork of me and my career has made it that 
you make connections along the way and you um I'm as good as the person I'm with and I can't do everything by myself and we all are better together and I think the last few words I would say is to be kind to be passionate to be empowering to women and to yourself I'm completely passionate about exploring every learning opportunity and every um every encounter that you have you never know how you can make a difference or how you can learn from somebody and learn from the colleagues that we're with so um I'm so grateful for the opportunity and I hope that just gives you a, a, a flavour of the journey I've been on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. That was a fantastic presentation and I, I, I'm quite jealous of your travels around the world. There is that. <laughs> and also it just shows how um, working together, obstetricians and midwives and working together, training together, everything together as a team and just look at the impact that you had on maternal mortality where you're working and, and it's just fantastic to hear so thank you for sharing that thank you I'd like to put it to the chat just for a few minutes if anyone has any questions for Mary that you would like to ask her at this point and she'll be there throughout so she um, you feel free to message later if you're feeling shy now you can just unmute or you can type into the chat whichever you feel most comfortable with I'll start. Can I start? Please do go for it. Thank you so much. Hi, Mary. Can you hear me, Mary? Am I unmuted? Hello. No, no. I, hello. I'm sorry. There's a bit of a lag. I can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I have. I have to zone in because you're my fellow Northern Irish lady. Ah, but, you, but you've lost your accent. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm, I'm not quite as northern as you then. Uh, can, I, can I just ask, thank you for that. Um, Mary, I'm working in Uganda. I'm going to be speaking later. Um, one of my big challenges is being able to get access to a very high quality of up-to-date training. Um, I'm using a, a very old prompt book and I was just wondering, is there, is there an online um, access to any, just the basic things? I mean, we're talking the, the basic emergencies that happen yes, without yes. having to of course. Yeah, there's actually, um, maybe I'll get your details later, but there's um, a prompt channel. So oh, we right. have, yeah, yeah, so we have... Um, videos i mean i'm not the most technical person but we have um yeah we've got a, a, a prompt channels and they do um you know like shoulder dissociate or managing a postpartum hemorrhage and yeah. and things like that so yeah we have we have that wonderful thank you that's great mary do you think um during the next presentation you could just share that link in the chat because i think that okay would, i'm the... so terrible at links oh, um if I'll anyone like to I, i'll put my name i'll put my i'm so sorry i'll find it i'll find oh, it listen i shared a screen and i'll give my emails to everybody that um can i be helpful with and um just to say that my sister um, my sister worked in uganda as well okay yeah we get around the world as irish people yeah. um so yeah thank you <laughs> 